Start recording. Here we go. It's keeping us going, dude. <clears throat> that deck is much different than blue-white control. Much different. Move this stuff over. I would like to play first. This hand's good. So probably Fetch Out Steam Vents. As awkward as that is. Because I don't want to mess up my scries. I could just Faithless Looting on one, but I don't really want to do that until I know what I'm doing. I will Faithless Looting on two more than likely here. Steam vents. Put on the bottom, put on top. So we're not gonna be able to angler next turn. We'll likely just discard an angler. We're like faithless looting into Thoughtseize. Polluted Delta. Playing a mirror. Let's see if they stub this. I wouldn't mind if they stub this. Okay, they didn't. So we're playing Grixis Control or are we playing a mirror? Either way, the bolt's not good. The second angler's not great. One, two, three. So now we can actually play the angler. Island. Island's gone. Oh, okay, so they're blue white. We needed that bobble. Once we found the bobble, it was an angler. Now, if they path us, we can actually go snap thoughtsies, snap thoughtsies. Okay. All right, I think we're just going to take this Jace. So I take Jace or take Telling Time. And this kind of does the Telling Time impression. So I think I'm just going to take this Jace. Play Shadow. I could have taken Mana Leak. I, probably, I should have taken Mana Leak. That was stupid. Because if I take a Mana Leak, I could... Well, not, not, that's not necessarily true. Because they would just negate my Thought Seize. Okay, Digital Blessed Alliance, that's interesting. All right, I'm gonna attack first so that if they go to plow or path one of my creatures, that um, it doesn't mess up my scries. We want this because, like, if, if shit hits the van next turn, I want to go like snap dot seize play death shadow. Telling time if I could tell the time, you're gonna show me a miracle. Yeah, yes, we are. Okay. So we still have mana leak up. So mana leak that. We're gonna opt, okay? So that means they probably have an answer to the shadow. Or they've got like a Jace to play here.
And they're probably going to go like Jace, bounce your shadow. Put this Terminus back on top after I thought seize them. But I can thought seize the Terminus. This thing flips. Oh, they're trying to cast it. No, they're not. Why would they just hard cast the Terminus? Oh, they, they must have the answer rolled up. Tilt. Ooh. So we got to go snap, hit this Terminus. Okay. I mean like beating this beating an active search for Azcanta is almost impossible. There's so much blue white control on Moto. You don't see it in any like the Premier League Premier events, but like people love running this deck in leagues. Timely, nice. You'll get nothing and you'll like it. <clears throat> Play Glacial Fortress. I played field last turn, so I negate an X. Cryptic bounce. Man, we're clawing. We are we're getting into the point where we have two lightning bolts in our deck, so we do have some reach. Committing the second one might be greedy. They're just like, oh, terminus or supreme verdict. I'm gonna throw up. If we can just get one hit in, like just give me a hit. And then I, then I can like dig to a lightning bolt. Come on, you just give me one shot, damn it. Yeah, beating an active search is like nearly impossible. So they have a negate. And a path, so we get to at least take the path, and we're on the board. We're trying. Yeah, if we can just get like a couple chip shots in, just let me draw the lightning bolt. Just give me a chance. Path. Okay. Path this Snapcaster. Probably blow up one of my red sources. I only got one lightning bolt left in the deck because I ditched another one. Yep. Yeah. Okay. 
prison opt. Come on, have a heart. Don't do it. All right, I yield. I yield. It's an EE. It comes up as an e, a masterpiece EE. It's a fairy ability. All right, all the grindy cards. That was game one. These eight cutting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, those seven, excuse me. I've turned some lights on here. Give me one second. I think my deck improves quite a bit more than theirs does after sideboard, but it's still pretty uphill. Gotta leave the dismembers in because they might have like Lyra. They might be of Baneslayer Angels. I don't really have anything I'd want to bring in over them besides like fatal pushes. No, I should have this explosives in my deck. I should have this explosives in my deck. Put this in here, just cut this. Okay. Almost forgot the E. I have been getting worked on Moto lately because it's just like all blue-white control decks, which is just like, oh, yeah. All right, we'll keep this. It's a pretty good hand. We have like some insurance, some interaction. Snapcaster's Dece. So I kind of want to take this Logic Knot, just because I would like my Snapcaster Mage to resolve when I need it to. There's Colonnade. I'm just going to get another Watery Grave. Let me see what they're drawing. Get a little more information here. They're drawing an island. We're going to draw another land eventually. True snap. Am I going to eat my own words? Okay. Now we take this Purge, cast our Gurmag Angler. They have a Blessed Alliance as well. Now we're regretting not having that land. Maybe I should have kept the land. Though I hate like keeping lands against this deck because they path you. They're so like they're very aggressive. It's not bad. It's 
So we basically are going to force them to wrath this angler. And then we get to follow up with like a snapcaster discard spell, which is pretty nice. Okay, yeah, you get to opt. So we're basically going to turn this angler into a one to one with Supreme Verdict, which is nice. And then we have two grindy cards to follow up. So we're in okay shape. We definitely need one more big hitter. Snap Purge. So now we just go Snap Thought Seize and we're good. Yeah, I mean, Blue White's such a good matchup for them against us that it's difficult to crush them no matter what we're doing, Archmage. So let's take the Supreme Verdict. Now if we draw a land, we get to play Angler, then have Snap Stub for Detention Sphere. I'm not going to block the Snapcaster if they attack, because I don't want them to be able to play a Planeswalker on an open board. That's pretty nice. So here's the big question. Do I play both creatures or just one? Probably both. One, two, three. But then if I play both, then I empty out my graveyard, which sucks. Well, it's not a bad draw. But... It is a little awkward. I can play Shadow. Maybe they'll Field of Ruin, give me three more mana to be able to snap stub. I guess we're going to try this out here. Ooh, they had that. Okay. This isn't awful. Because now we take two, dismember this, taking two. Oh, they didn't, they didn't, they failed to find a land. What the fuck? They didn't find a land. So now million dollar question. I think I just dismember this. Stay above five. It's two shots of the colonnade. Oh, that is so gross. It bounced my Snapcaster Mage. So our last card's Attention Sphere. So I can... know what to do because I could go like play Gurmag Angler and then hold up Snap Stub but then they just bounce 
I guess actually playing Gurmag Angler and holding up Snap Stub is the best, because if they bounce this, then I can just flash my Snapcaster in. So they just go bounce here, then I flash in Snapcaster Mage, eat this Jace. <coughs> Well, Snap Scour Angler doesn't do anything, right? Because he just goes um, play, like he goes bounce your dude, tick up Jace, and then I'm still fighting with Jace. Now I just have to really hope he didn't find like a piece of a spot removal spell here. He did, he found, god damn. That sucks. Now, <sighs> play Angler. But Angler doesn't really do anything because he just attention spheres it. Then we're just going to try to sneak through Snapcaster Mage at the end of the turn. And then just try to get this Jace off the board. We didn't have a Seer Visions in our graveyard, right? Or did I do, I do that after... Oh, uh, before I delved. Okay. That still doesn't do anything, right, Teddy? Because, like, they still just do the same thing. Relic. Annoying. Now I still don't have any answer to this colonnade, which is like another very difficult part here is my opponent's eventually just gonna find lands and they're gonna kill me with this colonnade. They just don't care about this Liliana, right? God. So now at least we can go. Now we can Liliana get back Death Shadow. Play Death Shadow. But we know that they have that we know that they have the detention sphere in the top two cards. Well. Why there's we're never gonna be ahead on cards if they have an active Jace, right? Like our car like if us creating incremental advantage against the Jace is impossible, right? Like I think it's better to just take risks to try to get this Jace off the field. Cause if we go snap seer and play Angler, then their play is just detention sphere angler tick up their Jace. And then it's just Snapcaster diddles with Jace. Yes. <clears throat> yeah, so there's a sphere. Take the shadow. Play Shadow. They just do this and kill us. I guess I gotta find. Find a. I still have to find a dismember. Like, the whole nice part about this is I have to find a dismember. 
Maybe, okay, so maybe I actually don't need my dismembers if I'm boarding extra disdainful strokes. And then, like, at least that takes some pressure off of my life total. Glacial Fortress. <sighs> Jeez, Crow. Guess I just ditch this. <clears throat> I just can't, I can't win if my opponent plays correctly, right? They just bounce my shadow, attack me off their Jace. Pass turn. <clears throat> That's a fairy. I was just, like, hoping to... I guess it didn't matter, right? Because, like, it was probably, like... I couldn't beat this Jace on the board. I couldn't beat this Teferi either. Thank you, KRYZ. Yeah, we're just, like, super dead. We can't keep up with this. We were dead on the board either way, right? Because even if we, like, K command the Teferi, play Shadow, they bounce, they bounce Shadow, or if we K command... I guess the play was to K command Jace. I don't remember. I didn't draw this, right? So my, but the problem is if I K command the Jace, I don't get Death Shadow into play, and then I'm just dead, right? Yeah. I'm just trying to think if there was a better way I could have scratched that. I could have scrapped that out, but. So yeah, I think I'm going to. So I think my blue. My blue, white, and blue, right, white, red sideboard plans. I'm going to go back to the fatal pushes because, <coughs> because I'm playing the strokes. So, like, if I'm playing against blue, white, then I'm in blue, white, red, then I'm going to board something like this. Cut these cards. Bring in... Bring these in. Something like not not this fatal push. Then if I'm playing against blue white, I'll board in more engineered explosives. Yeah. Mm. That's just a tough matchup. And what sucks is that 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 deck is all over Moto right now, and I don't I don't know why. And it could just be that people like have, are having fun playing it, which is pretty legit. It's probably like it's it's honestly probably one of the better team control decks. It's a very good team deck, I think. I think that deck always does well in team events. Like, and when we played at Philadelphia, there were five of them in day two, which was the highest percentage deck. Yes, you need Serum Visions. Serum Visions is the best cantrip for these decks. If you're not playing with Serum Visions, you might as well just play, like, you should play Jun Shadow, I think. Because, like, the Grixis Death Shadow versions with, like, without Serum Visions, I think are just, like, Glass Cannon Grixis decks. Uh, this lets me play Angler next turn. Yeah. I do think looting's good. I like looting. So now we play in Blue, White, Red.
So if this angler gets dealt with, I could just ditch this snapcaster. But if this angler gets dealt with, it's going to be via path to exile. So, or I could just get rid of the sneer, the serum visions. Now, if this angler gets killed, it's going to be via path, and that's going to turn on our snapcaster mage. And if they don't kill my angler and they're blue, white, red, I'm probably okay. Yeah, I think that, like, I think Ben's deck is, yeah, so this gets pathed. We get a land. Then we have a pretty productive turn next turn. We can go, like, Cantrip into Inquisition. If we hit another land, we can go, like, Cantrip, Snap, Cantrip. We can go Cantrip, Inquisition, Shadow, which is nice. Two Thought Scours. That's what I think. You, you angler on two consistent enough, and you also don't lose your staying power without Serum Visions. You have no control. Like, like if you don't have Serum Visions in your deck, you can't make individual plays that help you take advantage of the game. Serum Visions just adds a lot more small play patterns and small micro decisions that over a game or over a match cause you to win more. You're just making better plays the longer the game goes. Okay, so let's start off here. Because I... So... On the bottom, put on top. I, I missed sequence here. I made a mistake. Yeah, I should have bobbled. I should have played the bobble. And I should have taken the Snapcaster Mage. It was also stupid. Ugh, that was dumb. Well, now we're going to play slow. Let's see what their top card is. If I don't like their top card, I'm going to Thought Scour them. Helix. Helix is all right. Yeah, that was, that was just done. That was very poor sequencing for me. I just was, like, not paying attention here. So now, on my turn, I can go Snap Thought Seize, Snap Inquisition, and I can, um, to get this thing out of play and make them have to path my Snapcaster Mage. But this was, this was pretty poor sequencing for me. Jeez. So we target Inquisition. They probably flash in their Snapcaster Mage. Maybe? I don't know. They could go Snap Path. Again, I didn't I didn't play my freaking bobble. Ugh. There's not like this is all this is like poor sequencing all over the place. This is another thing that you get when you get like when you add a card like Bobble into your deck and stuff like that. It adds a little more element of gameplay, which this isn't great. I'm messing this up all over the place here. So I'm just gonna take Snapcaster. We have to hunker down here. And then just like get ready for a long game. Actually, no, because it just dies to bolt. So let's see what our top card is. Fatal push. We don't want push. I don't think I'm going to shock. Well, hang on. If I shock, find a discard spell, they counter it with Cryptic Command, and then my Death Shadow survives both of these. But then if my Death Shadow gets Cryptic Commanded, 
then I'm just like not I'm, I'm not like dang, I'm not winning a race with a Snapcaster Mage. Can I win if I don't land a Death Shadow? I probably can't. So I think I have to play to my Shadow at least taking out both of these burn spells. If my Shadow eats both of these burn spells, that's okay. Okay, so now we're going to be able to force through our our Death Shadow next turn. It's gonna this is gonna get cryptic commanded, and then it's gonna the the Shadow is likely gonna eat both of their burn spells, which is good. Okay, that's like not that's okay. That's not great. Probably cast it. Okay. So if I ditch this thought sees. I ditch my thought sees. So this dismember is going away. If I get rid of thought sees and then I try to go snapcaster, they then cryptic my snapcaster. And then I can play death shadow. And then death shadow dies on the board to my opponent's two removal spells. But then they've only got three cards after that. And then I'm running on empty. This is the one hard part about Faithless Looting here is when you get to this point of the game, it doesn't it's it's just not that great. So I think what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna ditch the Bloodstain Mire, try to EOT snap thought scour. Okay. So now I kinda wanna fat, snap thought scour now. Just to get this in play. And get it in, like, get the Snapcaster, like, keep churning through my deck. <clears throat> yeah, we can, but if we don't have cards in our hand, the looting is rough. This is why looting can be a little awkward against these kind of decks. Okay. So now it's looking like we're going to maneuver our way into getting this shadow into play. I just made a rhyme. Okay. So we're going to lead on Thoughtseize. They play Mountain. Got a stub would be so sick. That's pretty sick. So let's start here. If they go to Cryptic this, I'm going to cycle this Street Wraith. Because if I hit Stubborn Denial, I probably just win the game on the spot. this we're gonna leave the scalding tarn to, to pitch to looting and it, again like if they want to burn out one of my creatures it's gonna take two cards okay swamp's gone all right so there's colonnade which is not good this is where looting is nice. So this cryptic's gone. So I think if they would have had cryptic command, they would have used it on their turn. Or they would have waited at least to try to bait me into something. So this is lethal. They have a burn spell, doesn't do anything. Their removal spell doesn't do anything. The problem is they're gonna cast, like, for me to check the way with this card, it doesn't matter because they're just gonna animate Colonnade and then I'll push it. Though, if they have a counter spell, if they have like, like if I thought he's first, I beat Logic Knot. 
if I thought seize and they have a burn spell, I go to seven, it doesn't matter. So I should thought seize first because it beats logic knot. Okay, so we got him. That was an impressive win there. Like, that was tough. I'm surprised I won that game after making so many mistakes in the first couple turns. But we got lucky. Got him. Okay, so we want the strokes. We want these and the stub. We're gonna cut dismember, cut battle rage, cut bolt, and then cut one of these. I'm always torn whether to just bring this in the dark. It all depends on how much burn the Jeskai players leave in. <laughs> pushes underperform, pushes overperform. <laughs> I think the hedge on having this versus the third one of these is higher. Plus, like, Faithless Looting lets you sideboard kind of loosely. hand is medium but we're going to keep it because we don't want a mulligan k command stub and liliana are really good in this matchup so we're going to stub anything yeah especially now that we drew the second one so we're going to take a look now we're probably going to keep a well what was i hate keeping lands i don't think we want the third one of these at least not yet Ooh, sore neck. So we're gonna stub a search. Please give me a search for his Canto to stub. I just wanna sub a search, Derek. Didn't we, didn't we get rid of that one? It's gonna really suck if a search for his canter resolves, because that's like that card's just an absolute freaking nightmare. Like the two the two cards that you lose to in this matchup are search for his canta and supreme verdict. <clears throat> this game is pacing in a way I don't really like it though. Johnny Sacred Foundry, which they put on top, so they must need lands. Okay, bobble into bobble, baby. So now they have their cryptic command going on. Okay, so this is nice, because now we get to Gurmag Angler them while having Stubborn Denial up. And this is how you beat Jeskai. They're going to be able to cryptic it again, it looks like, but that's going to let us set up shot for next turn you just have to like cast more spells than they do we drew all three of our bottles whoa that resolved what are they doing We're gonna lose this fight because they're going to. Okay. So now my opponent untaps with Cryptic Command. Oh. Man, we are stubborn tonight. Okay. So this is nice. So if we draw a land here, we actually get to land this Liliana. Tilt. So now we're just passing. If I had a creature in my graveyard, I would 
like bait with this K command at the end of their turn. They might just try to cycle cryptic. Yeah, we figured that they were land light when they kept lands in hand. And this is insane. This is where when we get to trade one mana for four, it's so good. Even though like it sucks that we don't have a we don't have anything like a pressure in play. Yeah, we're just gonna hold out. Like we can't beat a resolve to fairy. So I kind of just want to make them discard a card and shock them. I got to use my mana. I'm going to hold up a blue land. If they go land to fairy, I'm going to feel pretty bad here. But like, I also don't want to be discarding a card here to, and I'm going to let this, if they go to fight over this, I'm just going to let it resolve. I don't want to like go next turn and have to discard. Okay, so they ditched the bolt. As soon as we get a threat into play, we're going to win. But if that doesn't happen, we're in trouble. And again, I think I'm just going to, like... With, with us having so many resources, I just want to trade with my opponent. And we already have two similar effects to this Kologon's Command. Stroke has been nice. So look like they're gonna counter this. Okay. So if we don't get if we don't get hit with like a Teferi or something on this turn, I should be okay. Potential sphere, sure. So now I'm glad we brought the EE in. I should have jammed. Oh, I still can jam. We're really looking for a cryptic command here. Tilt. That probably means this Death Shadow is going to die. But if this Death Shadow dies, at least means my Liliana is like more threatening next turn. Okay. My opponent's just like, as soon as we get a threat in play, this game's over. Because like, we have so much backup here. God, I, just, I don't want to do anything. I don't want to do anything until I get one more mana. Because then I can, like, let either my Liliana or my Engineered Explosives get countered. Snapcaster Mage. Lightning Bolt. All right, opponent's still going to turn up the clock. All right, so now we go to five. Now we actually have to act. Maybe I fucked up. I might have messed up here. Ruined Halo, okay. So he's only got two cards. I 
Name's Death Shadow. Okay. All right, that's not bad. So I kind of just want to push this. Because if I push, I still have double, I can still like double and triple spell here. I'm pretty weak. I'm pretty weak to another Snapcaster Mage. But I think that's like just life. So I think we're just going to push this right now. See what my opponent does. Now here's the question. Do we just jam this EE on three, or do we just jam this Liliana? I'm trying to think what my opponent has. They have had up they have had times where they could just slam their Teferi, but they haven't. So maybe they're sitting on burn. They're probably sitting on burn and counter spells. And what am I eating though? Am I eating on two? I kind of want to eat on two to deal with this ruined halo. No Teferi. No Teferi, no Jace. Ooh, that's just strip mine. We are very mana constrained now. What does my opponent have? So I can't cast that. All right, we're just going to assume that they have nothing. We're gonna roll back, get this shadow now. We can't cast it, but just having the shadow. <clears throat> I thought it's just gonna be like savagely flooding out. Yeah, that's just that's the only thing that I can think is going on here. Or they just are sitting on burn. Yeah. That was an odd game. I don't know if I could have, like, pushed any earlier. So they kept in a lot of burn. So I kind of want to cut one more of these. Maybe i just bring in one more of these guys. Just try this out. Let's try, let's try the Lava Man out. It's something, and it plays decent with Kologon's Command. All right, we're gonna give it. We're gonna be able to give it a try on turn one. And if my opponent kills it, my opponent kills it. Alternatively, I could serum visions on one, which I kind of like better actually. Let's see what the lava man does here. I don't know if it's any good. They mold a five, Jesus. All right, well, if they mold a five, I think I'm just going to play this Lava Mancer because there's less need for me to set my draws up. And at least if I get this Lava Mancer in play, it's doing something. EE for one. All right, we'll take it. Feeling a little dumb for not... Fetching steam vents. So let's go like this. We don't mind ditching this fatal push.
And I also kind of want to get greedy and ditch this land, too. Because what am I doing next turn? If I ditch this land, though, I'm not doing anything next turn. So I should keep the land. I'm going to ditch the Inquisition and then snap back the Inquisition next turn. I could EE for zero and blow up my opponent's EE. It's kind of nice that we, we tried to board in the Lava Mancer for an experiment and just drew it. That, that's kind of cool. Ooh, we're going to take this Electrolyze. We're going to have to deal with this Snapcaster Mage before they can snap Electrolyze. All right, let's start by attacking. We're not playing the Shadow. Wow, they're just flashing in Snapcaster Mage. Um... We're just gonna let this go. If they wanna use their Snapcaster Mage to trade with our Snapcaster Mage that's already like done something, then I'm cool with it. Put it on top. And let's get nasty. So let's get rid of this, this, this. We can get rid of the push. Um, do I want to get rid of the looting? I want to get rid of the push. Um, I have four effects that bring back Snapcaster Mage, so I kind of want Snapcaster Mage. If I bring my Snapcaster back, I'm going to want something to do with it, but that's going to happen later again. Let's just leave the looting, because I, I can snap this discard spell also. Because they're probably going to, if they have the land, they're probably going to go Cryptic Bounce my Angler right now. Yeah. Then we're just going to keep poking in with this. This Lava Mancer's, what, it's attacked for three already? Which is pretty great. All right, let's get rid of this Jace. Okay, so I'm just about ready to start casting this Shadow. So I think I'm just going to play this EE and then blow up their EE. So like I can get my Death Shadow in play. So there they go with the Relic. They're probably just going to crack this Relic. It's not good. Now, because we drew the second Angler, we're going to flash this back. I think I'm going to ditch both of them. So this is kind of something cool is that we can play Death Shadow next turn and we can actually protect it from Lightning Bolt. Oh no. Come on, don't tell me. All right, so now they're gonna Electrolyze. All right, well this Electrolyze makes so my Shadow's online. Like, at least the Stubborn Denial's online and we're not gonna get bolted. They should just target the Lava Mancer twice. Yeah, that was a mistake. All right, all great draws. They should have just they should have definitely hit the lava mancer twice, not shot me. Cuz that would have just been force spike. Let's 
tough time for looting. I think we're just going to push this. Once again, sit behind two counter spells and just poke our opponent here. been a very close game considering my opponent mulligan to five we didn't have a world beater of a hand but faithless looting is not super great against this deck so now that means they're gonna be able to block my shadow that's a really good draw because that makes this thing bigger than the colonnade i have to stub a burn spell here which is a little scary Actually, no. I'll take five and go to four. No, the colonnade's four power. So I do have to stub a burn spell. My opponent sends one at me. But if they send a burn spell on me, they just die, right? Because they bolt me down to... They would bolt me. This would go to... Bolt me down to four. This becomes nine power and kills them. So this also just kills them anyways. Oh, man. I was so honed in that it just went, like, way over my head. Yeah, thoughts he's lethal on his own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I was talking about. I was so, like, honed in on it that I just missed that. All right. I would like to play first. Uh, this hand's Dece. We're going to look for just turn anything that we can play on turn one, we're going to take with this bobble. Might, I might ditch a removal spell. Yeah, we don't want that. So I'm going to get a watery grave. All right. Yeah, that second dismember is rough. Um, I guess we want... Guess we want both of these. Well, the Snapcaster Mage actually isn't that great. Yeah, that was stupid. I should ditch the Snapcaster. If we play against a derpy creature deck, then we're in good shape. Aaron Mesa. So what are we doing? Playing against Burn? Playing against Burn, these things are... Oh, no, playing against... Mardu? No, Burning Inquiry. Hollow One. Okay. Hollow One. A hand's pretty good against Hollow One. There's a Hollow One. Okay, so we're going to dismember that and get nasty. I'm going to protect my life total. Well, I guess we're not going to protect our life total because we need a black source. I need a red source, excuse me. I probably misspoke there, Fresh Kale. I needed a red source. I appreciate everybody that's followed, followed so far. I sometimes miss the followers because I uh, turn my volume down so that the replays on Twitch are good. Looting, you got it. They go land Gurmag Angler. Like, we, we we have to finish this game quickly because we're at a low life total already. And they have, like, Blood Gas coming. This is going to be tough. So they definitely have an Angler because they, they ditched a Tasker. The best draw for us would be a Death Shadow because, like, Death Shadow Battle Rage is going gonna, is gonna to be good for the home team here.
with faithless uh, with just faithless and two bobble. Yeah, well, faithless looting or um, God, those are just like basically dead draws. I think we gotta start attacking because like they have such inevitability. And if they take like any damage, like for example, they easily could shock themselves to play a Flame Wake Phoenix. Um, because Serum Vision is the best cantrip in modern that's not Ancient Stirrings. There's one bolt. There's another bolt. Yeah. Uh, we couldn't we couldn't beat that and kill the angler because the flame wake phoenix was gonna come back. We took a lot of damage. That game, which is tough. So on the play, I like to cut my snapcasters. I like to cut a street wraith and or and then cut two fatal push. Bring in this this stubborn denial. Okay, I keep one push in. To change my sideboard a little bit since I redid this matchup. Um, Serum Visions is the best cantrip. It allows you to like still be just as explosive and play your anglers on two and continue to play like a longer game and it makes your snapcasters better. The snapcaster mages within the decks without Serum Visions aren't that good. Like when once you have four bobbles and two lootings, you start and you have four snapcaster mages, you just start not having very good things to snap back. When you have Serum Visions, it's just another option. Seer Visions also lets you just play a more consistent game and a less ga glass cannon version of the deck. Like, like the, um, I think that like Ben Friedman's deck is much better, is better against non, is slightly better against non-interactive decks because there's just a little more consistency with a threat on two, but it loses percentages against like humans, the mirror, Jeskai, blue, white, any thought sees deck. Um, any kind of taxes deck, any kind of attrition based deck, Friedman's deck loses percentage against. This deck isn't like the Brandon Dalloway 18 land four Snapcaster Mage version. It's a little narrow. It's like in between. So it does the. I think it's the best of both worlds. It goes long. Well, it doesn't go super long game one, but being able to snap serum keeps your keeps the wheels going. And this deck also just has like a much better sideboard than Ben's does, just because Serum Visions is better at finding you your di your your sideboard cards, and Faithless Looting isn't as great after sideboard because once your deck is fully focused, um, it becomes much more of a cost to go down a card. Yeah, I mean, I believe that it should start with four Serum Visions. And then you should work from there. Um, yeah, we gotta ship this one. Okay. This is exactly what we want. It's a fast Death Shadow with a Battle Rage with Disruption. So they mulligan, which this deck gets this deck gets like much, much worse. I don't think I want this land. Even though it's the third land for Kologon's command, it doesn't deal me damage. And getting this Death Shadow in the play is my number one priority. Um, what was I saying? Um, I lost my train of thought. Rut row. Oh, this deck gets much worse. The sooner, the more this deck mulligans, the worse it gets exponentially. Because cards like Faithless Looting and Burning Inquiry get worse and worse and worse the more you mulligan. What do they do? They put a card on top. So we're likely going to be staring at a hollow one on turn one. We can beat that if we can get this shadow going. Because, like, it's likely just going to take one combat step to kill my opponent. Or just two, maybe. Because, like, they cycle Street Wraith. I bet they kept, like, a Faithless Looting on top of their deck. Or a second land. Yeah, there's the second land. And they go Flame Blade Adept. That's that's a really good draw. Let's 
So now, I kind of just want to take their Street Wraith. Which like might be kind of aggressive, but we're just shutting like this card does nothing. The Flame Wake Phoenix is like not gonna be quite fast enough to matter this game. I just want my opponent to see less cards in order to deal with this shadow. And if they do this, okay, so now they're gonna be all hollow one B. But the shadow is going to like very quickly outpace this hollow one. So they're like they're gonna crack me for three. Probably ditch their Flame Blade Adept, and then one more card. Play Blood Crypt, play Hollow One, have one more card left. And if we find a land, we just go Shatter Shock and the game's over. Hey, I haven't tried, but maybe you did in the past. Is a main board version focused on gold fishing? The problem is with, like, Kiln Fiend and stuff, you need other spells to make it good. These threats are good on their own. Okay, so Flame Wake Phoenix. So that's the last card's Blood Crypt. Okay, so now the game's over. Get out of my face. Now if you want to play like a Kiln Fiend deck with a bunch of Manamorphos and things like that, I could I could buy that. Because Manamorphos is like a nuts card on its own. Okay, so that's what they drew. So now they're going to flash looting back. Hopefully they hit Street Wraith and they Street Wraith into a hollow one. But it still doesn't really save them. All right, let me just take a look here. See if they sideboarded at all differently. See if we can see a cool card they brought in. All right, we didn't see a cool card. I saw that deck. Yep. I actually played Lantos. I talked to him a little bit about it a couple days ago. So on the draw, I like to sideboard out two of these and bring in two more removal spells. Just have a couple more ways to slow down their start so they don't get blown out by early Flame Blade Adepts. And plus, my Stubborn Denials are a little worse on the draw because I can't get under like a turn one Faithless Looting or turn one Burning Inquiry. Yeah, I played, I played him a little bit. I played him, I think, two days ago. And the list, with the list that he had. Um, Mulligan. Heater. Sounds really good. Um, I think we have to put this on the bottom, even though this is a pretty solid card in the matchup. They have a Ley Line. Ley Line's, Ley Line's actually decent for me with how this works and how I've sideboarded. And the fact that I have this looting. So if I do draw a Gurmag Angler, I can just ditch it. So, like, again, this Ley Line is, like, good, not great, in my opinion. All right, so let's check out our top card. We're just looking for a land here. That is not a land. I probably want to get a Blood Crypt. There's no need to cycle this yet because there's nothing I can do here. Well, okay, I probably want to cast a discard spell if I hit it. Okay. Living Tsunami is great and limited. Confirmed. Pull the card up. Okay, 
Phoenix. They ditched Blood Gas, Arid Mesa, Flame Wake Phoenix. It's not bad. That, that's up at this. We could see some hollow ones here. Question is, do I dismember this? I could just take four and then push it. The problem is if I don't hit a land, I want to... Yeah, I think we're just going to play slow here. Because the last thing I want to do is take four, then have to dismember it and go to seven and not play a Death Shadow next turn. Just one? Okay. We need a land drop. Okay, we did hit a land drop. So we don't need this. We likely might not have time for this Serum Vision. So let's ditch this. Let's go get Watery Grave and then dismember this thing. We're going to be a little nervous if they have a Delve card here. The nice thing is they can't Delve and get the Flame Wake Phoenix unless they have another land. And then we get to go Discard Spell Shadow next turn, which is a pretty big game. So if, we, if my opponent takes a turn off here, we're in good shape. The problem is if they play a land, this, this thing comes back, which gets scary. That's going to let them delve for a Gurmag Angler and play the Flameway Phoenix. So that likely could kill us. Unless we have a... Sh if we have Battle Rage on top of our deck, we can win, I think. Okay. So I'm going to block push so we don't die to bolt. So they have a land. We, we're basically, if they have a land, we basically just need Battle Rage. We draw Battle Rage, we're in a good spot. Well, yeah, it's a 4-4 flyer for four. That card is sweet. All right. So what could they have in their hand? What could they have? It doesn't make sense for them to have anything besides something that kills me in their hand. But I can't beat anything, right? They could have hollow ones. The problem is if I attack with my shadow, they're dead next turn and I make them hit. But if they play a land, I'm dead. If they have a bolt, I'm dead. There's so many ways to just die if I attack. The problem is the longer this game goes, the worse it gets for me as well. And I'm just dead to something simple like Blood Gas plus Bolt, which they could easily have. They could have discard spells. Yeah. You would wait, Ben. Question is, Ben, what are you waiting for? Like, what... What are you looking to, like, what, are you just trying to hit a land so we can Kolagon's command here? We still have two bolts. Snapcaster's boarded out. So a land shadow removal TBR snap. Tap 
Tagging will kill him now. Is my sideboard. So the thing is, if I wait and I draw a fetch land, hang on. So if I wait and I draw a fetch land, I can get any of my basics and win. Because my opponent likely attacks. Yeah, I think I think because All right, well, there's, there's part of it. Now we can't draw a land. Yeah. Yeah. We weren't beating, we weren't beating that combination no matter what we did. We weren't even, not even with that draw. Like, we weren't beating Lightning Bolt no matter what. So, them's the beats. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it was tough to beat a lot of his draws. Because, like, we could, even if he had a land, the only way we guarantee win next turn is if we hit one of our two bolts... Uh, another Death Shadow, which doesn't guarantee a win, it just gives us another turn. Or if we hit a Fetch Land, so we can go Fetch Basic into Kuligon's Command. Tough spot, regardless. Guys, I can't win on stream. I just can't. I can't win on stream. Making me look stupid. Alright, keep this. Um... Fortune. I don't think we want this. Because we can't even get the first one in play yet. Nice. There's the angler. Third angler is not is not great here. Oh, so we're playing a salt eye deck. Which is just like we cannot ever beat any of these cards if my opponent draws anything. So we're just gonna hope to draw a shitload of cards to put in the graveyard so we can get this Gurmag Angler in play. Or if we draw if we draw a Thought Seize for this Jace, that's gonna be pretty sweet. Alright, well that's not bad. That's at least a way to interact with Jace. T I L T. It's like a bug mid range deck. It's kind of cool. I saw a couple of these when the for when the format first came out, and then everybody was like, "We can play draw." Uh, cast down. There's so many cards I just can't beat. Couldn't beat the cast down. It'd be sick if we drew a stub right here. So now I'm just going to like one, two, three, four. I'm going to play a shadow out as well because I have another one. And then if my opponent fatal pushes a shadow, it's at least going to like help build my graveyard up. So like maybe there are draws next turn that make it so that they go Jace bounce my angler. I can replay the angler. Whoa, what is this? Logic not. All right, well. Now we need let. Now like a fetch land lets me play angler. 
which at least makes the Jace bounce it. So yes, we are playing into this fatal push, but we're also fueling our graveyard and just trading resources and hoping they miss, which they did. Okay, now we get to play another angler. All right. Man, they have another counter spell. Sheesh. I guess they're not drawing lands. So they have to draw something. They're not drawing lands or creatures, so there must be like something that they're doing here. God, miss. No. No. Or they brainstorm. Or they go up. Yep, they went up. They targeted me. Put a card on the bottom. And now we're just dead. Because it's Jace is just going to like... They're going to play Jace on an open board, yeah. Jace is so good against these Death Shadow decks because, like, they bounce your Angler, which sets you so far behind. And you don't really have a way to directly interact with Jace. <clears throat> so I usually don't like Stubborn Denial against this deck, but I think that I want Stubbs... The more I play against these mid-range decks, the more I like Stubborn Denial. Like, I'm actually getting to the point where I think I, I want all four when I play against Mardu. Um, I didn't see... So, they probably have, like, Tarmogoyf. Um, they probably don't have Bob if they have... If they have Jace. So, I can skimp a little bit on the creature removal. Probably Engineered Explosives is an awful... I could sub out an angler to fight around potential graveyard hate. Because I could have scavenging ooze also. I'm going to get rid of one of these in the rock matchup. Board one more of these in because it's actually just like a pretty good threat. Yeah, let's try this. Jace is very good against Death Shadow. Like, it bounce, just bouncing your angler is like just game over. You just set them back so far back. That is just rough. Yeah, I think we're going to keep this. It's a handful of spells. Like We hope that our opponent plays to the board. I don't really want to let them see another card. Well, I guess we have four Stubborn Denials, so we can look here. The problem is, are we even keeping a Stubborn Denial? Am I even gonna, like, is it worth stubbing to potentially miss a land drop? Probably not. We just like accept that they're gonna take one of our cards. Board and Lava Mancer. Okay. Lava Man wasn't bad when I played against Blue Eye Red, which I was surprised about. I just like brought it in. To give it a whirl. They're pretty redundant hand. Like if they if they go to discard spell me, I'm gonna thought scour. Because I want that option to hit another land drop. And I don't really care what they take from this hand as long as I hit land. So now they're just gonna take this thought scour. Or at least I think they should take thought scour. And they took Snapcaster. That's odd. Probably means they have another removal spell. I shouldn't have played that land. So, just want another black source, but we might as well just get black. Well, we don't really have that many. We have one faith in I'm just going to get another one of these. Keep my mana set. If we draw another cantrip into cantrip, we want to be able to cast it all. So let's take this Thought Seize because... If we draw another land, we can Snapcaster discard spell, which is just going to, like, help gain a little bit of velocity. A lot of removal from them. Maybe they aren't playing, like, Tarmogoyfs. Ooh. Well, don't we look stupid? That is the... I have three Watery Graves in this deck? Huh. 
Oh, I played a version of this deck with three watery graves. It was only meant to be two watery graves. When I played it more, that's a tilt. I have played versions with that many. So let's go like this. We're going to target our Inquisition. I always mess with my man, with my land base quite a bit. Like I just always, I usually always every stream try to do something a little different. And there was a while where I played three watery graves and then one crypt. So now we just take abrupt decay because abrupt decay can't be countered. They have two abrupt decays. We're just gonna have to like slog through this. If we hit a Kologon's command, we're in pretty good shape. Hit red source for K command. Then we just bring back our Snapcaster Mage and like hopefully we find another discard spell. It's kind of odd they use. Well, I guess push makes sense. Jeez. I kind of just want to take this cryptic command because if my spells resolve, I think I'm going to do okay. Yeah, they have damnation. But I should be able to paste the damnation to where it only gets one of my spells. Because now if I can return Snapcaster Mage. Alright, so now they take my Kologon's command. So I know their hand. Hold this up. Show me a creature. Let me point my removal at something. Tilt. Oh, this third watery grave. I didn't even realize that. We're like eight games in. What are we, eight or nine games into this stream so far? Nine? Didn't even realize that we didn't have three red sources. No. They put one and one. So we drew another one of these, so we can play one. That's probably still dumb to do. I don't know, I might as well make them use their mana. I wonder what they kept on top. They must have kept a counter spell or like a Jace on top because they know we have two fatal pushes so they wouldn't keep creatures on top. They might have kept like a Liliana of the Veil on top. They wouldn't, that, so that rules out Liliana. They probably, they on what I should have done there is I should have just, well no, they kept a counter spell, okay. So now I have to think, how do I maneuver this thing to resolve. Let's start playing some stuff out here. Ooh, so this is a cryptic command. Or to counter spell. Okay, so now we're just gonna like make them discard a card, return our Snapcaster Mage. And then we can snap K command next turn. They ditch damnation. We don't pay. What do they hit? So now we just, on their upkeep, snap K command. And we just return another Snapcaster Mage to our hand. This feels dirty.
they did a push, so they've cast down X. So I kind of just want to leave this land because while they don't have any reach, a card that they could have is like Kalidus. And if they have something like a Kalidus, then I think I want to, uh, I think I want to keep the revolt because something like Kalidus would probably body me quite a bit, but I can get revolt. I think I'm going to cast a death shadow because this is going to make my opponent react. And then we're just going to, like, upkeep it again. So here comes the cast down. They didn't cast down. Why didn't they cast down? They must have drawn Damnation, or they have Snapcaster Mage. So now that they did that, I don't even want to commit this Snapcaster to the board. I want to use this to bring this back. So if I flash Snapcaster Mage in now, I guess I might as well just sit on this stub. Not even play the K-Command game. So if I snap stub this, then my creatures are not quite lethal. They're sitting on a cryptic command. So I think I want to just snap K command in their upkeep again. Because like they're just telegraphing a cryptic command. I don't really want to run into that on my own turn. Looks like I could have got away with it. I got duped, chat. What was their last card? Their last card was a Misty. Oh, I got duped. That's not bad. Now I like don't want to commit. So hang on. They get one look at a damnation. And if they don't hit the damnation, they flip this. They can't cast damnation because this costs four to act. This is four total mana to activate. Yeah, so let's play the shadow. Okay, so they ditch field. So there's a so they can't find damnation here unless they go land damnation. Okay. So now that they really like the card they put on top, they can. This deck does not have any freaking creatures in it. Like maybe I should board out some of my removal. Maybe, maybe bring in, like, Disdainful Stroke. They've got to have some creatures. I'm out of Kofefe. It's already 920. Holy shit. They put Thought Season in their hand. Okay, so they're just checking this out on the way out. 
So they went through 29 cards and we didn't see a creature. Maybe I want to just cut, like... Maybe I want these Gurmag Anglers back. I'm, I'm, like, I'm perplexed. I don't think I want this Faithless Looting. It's all about cards. I think I want just... Some more of these. I can shave, like, one of these and one of these. I still have three... I still have four removal spells and discard... Let's try this. I don't know. Their deck is like setting off alarm bells in my brain. I'm going to get confused. I don't like that. I just don't know what they're doing. Yeah, we're just gonna keep this. We're not we're like we're not gonna mulligan anything that's remotely capable against this deck. So we're probably just take my Liliana, yeah. So there's a creature. It's a really good creature. All right. So they knew about this stub. So they, have, they have Snapcast, so they're drawing that. Way to go. Tilt. So they, hopefully they don't jam like a Liliana. <laughs> Zendikar, rather. Snap thoughts, he's okay. Playing Zendikar, Johnny? They aren't even close, right? <laughs> Eldrazi versus fairies? Honestly, I think I would take the discard spell if I was them. Yeah. I should have dismembered this. Now I'm just going to jam a Jace down my throat. You don't farm play points playing two mans, right? All right. Um, so I guess we just get nasty. I guess we should just pretend my opponent has Tarmor Wife. Tarboy's still huge. Still a 5-6. It was always a 7-8. This nice is going to let us start double spelling at least. Search for Ascanta. 
All right, so we're going to crack in. I think I'm going to EE -E for two. I'd like to flip this as Kanta before it gets out of, or get, take care of this thing before it gets out of control. I don't want to just play another shadow and then get that. Well, also, Johnny, the the potential, you shouldn't be playing two mans unless you're out. And if you're out of tickets, I'll give you some. Because, like, the potential EV of two mans is horrible. You should play in, like, um, friendly leagues or regular leagues. You can check it out on the GoatBots EV calculator. Okay. So we're just going to deal with this as Kanta. Because if this thing flips, it's such a freaking nightmare. That's a pretty great draw. So now we can see what's going on here. If they like counter this, we play two Death Shadows, they kill both of them. They've got one card and we have a K Command. Okay, so we just take their Snapcaster Mage. They're gonna kill both my Death Shadows, but like whatever. As long as they don't rip a good one right here, we should be good. Cause then we'll just K Command them, make them discard a card. And then we would just return another Shadow. Oh, you just need enough for a league and didn't want to use tickets. Okay, I thought you were just sitting in the two mans. You gonna push to be mana efficient? Yeah. Yo, a Snapcast Mage would be such a hot draw here. Actually, we can just K Command back nasty. Ooh, that was a good hit. Because now they go snap Serum Visions. That's gas. So now we just make them discard a card, return Gurmag Angler. They put two on top. That's scary. Ooh, that was a good hit. We get rid of Mana Leak and a Snapcaster Mage. Let's just deal with this now. Oh, what is this? This is a Tassiger. Hopefully we have an island here. We do have the island. So return target creature, make them discard. And if they cryptic, we stub. Oh, come on. Okay, so the last card's decay. Just pass. No, 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 don't pass. I should play this so that if I can fetch another red source. So we're really worried about like a Jace, and we have Jace covered because we know what my opponent's last card is. So we're just going to go get a red source. Oh, no, we're out of red sources. Oh, my God, this is like the first time this has happened. God. Not being able to loop K commands is going to be pretty big in this game. All right, well, that's also pretty big. That's probably just, that's actually just game, I think. Because we can protect this with two counter spells. 
Hang on. What does my opponent have? My opponent's got my opponent's got land, enchantment, creature, instant, sorcery. So it doesn't matter. I should just get rid of my artifact. If they draw Tarmogoyf, we could be... If we draw Tarmogoyf, we're in kind of like a staring contest here. But we haven't seen a Tarmogoyf all match. There we go. All right, let's play for the 3-2. Get everything back, then call it a night. I appreciate everybody for showing up and hanging out tonight. You can cast Slippery Boggle through Sprees. Nice. You can get Slippery through the sea. Yeah, dude, you gotta love that 3-2 hype. Okay, this is pretty disruptive. Hopefully we're playing against like a combo deck here. Looks like we're playing against a combo deck. If I had to, I think Seachrome Coast means ad nauseum, but it could be some variant of blue-white or like a spirits deck. But I think it's hard pressed for a spirits deck to keep seven without a one drop. Like that's not that's not usually pretty that's not usually normal. Is a spirit stack. Okay, so we're just gonna take this Geist, because like if shit hits the fan, Geist the same draft's gonna kill us. Yeah, that makes sense. Alright, so that's actually a decent draw. So let's start with this. And fights Blood Crypt and Thoughtseize. Ooh, they have a Counterspell here. Oh, they have a Rattle Chains. And the Rattle Chains has Hexproof. So I'm actually just going to push this Rattle Chains in my opponent's upkeep. Because we know all their cards. Dealing with Spellcaller is going to be easy. Because next turn we'll just go Thoughtseize to try to hit this path. And they're going to spell queller. We'll bolt the spell queller. The Thoughtseize will resolve. That's why my opponent hits a guy. If they hit a Geist off the top here, I'm going to hurl. What's going on? Yeah, two Seagram Coasts, okay. So, incoming spell caller. Okay. Bolt the spell caller. Doing that path. We'll scry. Just got snap turn this. We don't need this. So we have enough ways to deal plenty of damage to ourselves, so I think we're just gonna get this tapped and pass. Like mana's not a constraint. 
Yeah, let's see. Like, we have many draws that deal damage. My opponent just jams a Geist here and I'm a Hurl. I swear to God, if you Geist me. If you fucking Geist me, you motherfucker, dude. Oh, he's tapping man on his main phase. Okay, it's not a Geist. We get an Aether Vial. Death Shadow? God, I am so good at this fucking game. My opponent's probably like, Geist of St. Traft? And then they're going to top deck it, and they're going to be like, I'm so good at this fucking game. Okay, so there's our Hollow Fountain. Oh no. Self of Spirit, okay. That's whatever. We can beat that. Not by casting that. This Self of Spirit's gonna be annoying because if they draw something like. Like, if they draw Supreme Phantom here, I'm, I'm dead. Unless I hit. Because it pumps the spirit. Spirit cracks me for three. And then they just hold that back, block my shadow. I guess they don't... They just let it die, and then the spirit cracks me for two. Okay, so what did they draw? Okay. They drew path, they would have attacked. This could be a spell crawler. Okay. Yeah, dude. When in doubt, rage them out. So we have one more watery grave. That was a good hit. The old teamer battle rage off the top. I hope you are watching, Rafi. Yes, go to two. Because even with indestructibility, they only soak up six damage out of this 15. Or this 22. And 22 minus six is greater than 11. I promise you, chat. Scoop it up. Okay. So we just want all our removal against this deck. Fatal pushes are great. Just everything that says kill a creature is likely good. Let's see what we don't want. We don't want these. I don't think we want stub. They just have path. It's like I like stubborn denial against the collected company versions. But I don't like it here. I don't want faithless looting. I don't want to go down a card. Uh, Grimangler is probably medium. I could just side in these four cards also. I could try this. What does Liliana do? What does Liliana do? That's really good. I guess they have selfless spirit. They have rattle chains. They have Phantasmal Image, yeah. We're gonna keep this. I'm gonna go like this. I'm gonna keep all my discard because there's like some key pieces you have to hit. This is gonna be my last match of the night, guys and gals, and then we're going to put all this crap up on YouTube. And that'll all it'll probably be on YouTube around midnight. Liliana is not too great against the Lords, but, like, those are my main cards on Thought Seizing. Right? Like, I, that's why I wouldn't cut, like... Because all their creatures are just, big, are just like, dumb dudes. And there's only, like, a couple that matter. And that's what Thought Seize does. Thought Seize is the, like, destroyer of the couple that matter. You know what I mean?
Because like we need our discards. We have to break up. We got to break up their drawing skull captain draws. We got to break up the drawing skull captain and the geist draws. Is anybody in the chat playing anything fun this weekend? You guys hitting any PTQs? My phone just like not we sideboarded. This hand's very good. That's decent. I'm gonna lead on the lava mancer because we can go discard spell into alright, no play from our opponent on one is a kind of a sign of weakness, I think. I would like to hit another fetch land. Because if I hit another fetch land, I can go like discard spell into Lava Dad. Which is pretty dang decent. This Lava Man might get path right here, though. I have a feeling. Um, there's... There's, uh... I was talking about, like, PTQs, I guess. Like, I meant, like, PTQs and IQs. I don't know if there's any PTQs this weekend. I know there are IQs. This Lava Man might get pathed right here. I have a feeling. Yeah, they're going to path this guy. Nope, okay. I guess if we hit our third land drop, we can deal with a Geist. Which is what we are really looking for here. Land? God, I love this game. So now we go get Watery Grave. And we take Target Geist of St. Traft. Or Target Drog Skull Captain. Even Drog Skull Captain is not like that frightening. Man, when Lava Mancer is good, I was so wrong about this card. Like, I thought this card was just, like, decent. But holy shit. This card is so much. So if we see a Rattle Chains flash in here, we're just, we're just going to eat it with the trigger on here. All right, we're definitely just ditching. We're getting this Drog Skull Captain. This Drog Skull Captain is how we get in trouble. Then we're not attacking. We're just going to sit on our heels and say, come and get some. Yeah, we're just going to completely throw our opponent off here. The Moreland Hot's going to get annoying, for sure. I guess this can get me a second red source, which is important. So we'll get a steam vents. Our opponent's probably going to try to leverage some sort of like double spell where an activation just trades for a rattle chains.
Well, I think I actually want this Thought Scour. We're just gonna hold here. They could have drawn a Spell Queller and we wanna be able to answer that. Okay, they're just gonna make a Spirit. So, when Rattle Chains enters the battlefield, target spirit gains hexproof. You may cast spirit spells as though they had flash. I'm just going to use this now. If my opponent, like, I just want to, like, work through this. I don't want to get it countered by a Rattle Chains. This is kind of mopey, but I just don't want to get overloaded. Makes it so we don't get like two for one. Okay, mute vault. So what do we got? We're probably a main phase. Main phase rattle chains would probably be nice, or main phase selfless spirit. Supreme phantom. So you want to know the best way to get around this guy is to just play ee four two. Why didn't I use visions? Because I wanted to hold in a braid for a spell queller, Teddy. I thought for some reason he had a spell queller. So I actually want to do this on my opponent's upkeep. And the reason that I want to do this on my opponent's upkeep, because they will likely go flash and rattle chains, flash and spells, selfless spirit, sack selfless spirit, trade selfless spirit for engineered explosives. They're tapped out. They crack me for one. On my turn, I then go a braid. I then go a braid one of them, lava mancer the other one. It just doesn't give my opponent like a free window. And if they flash one in here, we're just gonna like. But so here's what we're gonna we're gonna upkeep it. Here comes they either let it go or here comes rattle chain selfless spirit. And if they don't do this now, then we get the dance on their turn and we're good. What they might do is they might just like say, okay, fire the Mutaval attack when they've got a free option to do that. I like getting him in vault here. If you're gonna let that go, I definitely think that you should try to like get in a chip shot while you can. Yeah, it's a good play. I like this opponent. I like what you're doing. doing here so if they go animate play rattle chains to defend it then i can just go like a braid this and then i trade an activation and a braid for the mutal vault is it worth playing two life to go look for more cards i don't think it is i think the longer this game goes the better it is for us because we have snapcaster mage let me just turn off all the yields here we don't want to f6 do our turn
we can still like a braid plus and like we're gonna trade basically we're gonna trade selfless spirit probably worst comes to worst and then if they don't do anything we get to just thought scour them draw the snapcaster mage though the snapcaster mage isn't even that good besides being able to snap a braid so maybe it's worth just milling it over No, a Snapcaster's got to be better than a random draw. Ooh, we hit a Remorseful player. That's not bad. Talk about cards with diminishing returns. I think we just want everything that says kill a creature. So we'll probably have to hold this Snapcaster Mage for Thought Scour. Let's play Gurmag Angler. Get on the board. And I might as well just play the second Lava Man. <clears throat> I did just open myself up to get spell colored, okay. So I think again we just trade get rid of these <clears throat> I might have got too aggressive with the Gurmag Angler I'm not sure okay so there's a Geist <coughs> All right, so let's get a shot in here while we can. This is going to get tricky. Target push. Try to block this thing. We probably just go to blocks. They flash in Rattle Chain Selfless Spirit. We trade with that. Then we shoot like the Mausoleum Wanderer. Or we shoot something. And then we try to handle this Geist next turn.
okay. So the rattle chains and the selfless spirit are gone. Okay. These two trade, I untap, shoot this, or I can just abrade and then have the option to try and block this. How do I put the most pressure on my opponent? So they have Blessed Alliance. Self I kind of want to attack while they can't Blessed Alliance me. And we got a doozy. We got a doozy cooking, ladies and gentlemen. I do have to finish this game. If I can find TBR, I should do decent. What's the best way to deal with guys? I'm trying to put pressure on them so that they end up like like if they if they try to protect this geist, it puts them in a squeeze. Like that's what I'm trying. I'm trying to just like lean on my opponent. Because this Gurma Angler is weighing down. They have this Blessed Alliance. <clears throat> they can gain life with the Blessed Alliance. Okay. So Snap push pay two. Alternatively, I can just abrade this right now. Chump block this Geist. Take four, untap, snap, push. Put them to one. If I just flash my Snapcaster Mage in, let me think. If I flash Snapcaster Mage in to just block, because they're going to play Selfless Spirit next turn, or after this, to pump their Wanderer even more. So if I just try to trade with the Geist, trade with the Geist, Try to push this Supreme Phantom. They sack this. Okay. So I think we're going to try to go send this in, push the Supreme Phantom. They sack their Selfless Spirit. Then we try to push this. They sack this. They basically end up with a Supreme Phantom and a Geist against my Gurmag Angler and Grim Lava Mancer.
with an activation and I go down to five. Okay. So we let this go. There's no edicts, no. Sorry, th this is like a tough game. I think we're going to end up with Lava Mancer, Gurmag Angler against Supreme Phantom Geist. My opponent's going to be tapped out. And we have a couple draws that win us the game. So now I kind of just want to flash this in and target the Supreme Phantom right now so that we get some value out of our push because like our push guarantees to trade with this mausoleum wanderer because they just sack this then this thing's gonna live and they don't have to sack this so now if they want to keep this around, they've got a sack here. Now I only have to block. Well, now I might kill him. No, no, never mind. That's not how that works. Okay, so now we threaten to trade here, and that gives us a Lava Mancer activation and an Abrade activation. If they just let this go, we clear the table. And then we've got a couple cards that just kill them, like Lightning Bolt kills them. This guy is definitely going to put some pressure on us. Okay. So I have to worry about this Mutaval also. So let's activate this. Let's get a good old redraw. Get this block shoot. Because their last card's Blessed Alliance. And then we can push the token. Holy shit. Yeah, we can push the token, not block. <clears throat> this is tight. This is one of the better games I think I've ever played. Sorry I'm not chatting very much, but this is just intense. They have to beat three, lo three activations of Lava Mancer. This is good. This is very bad if they have Rattle Chains. So I have to think of how to beat Rattle Chains. I think it's probably Block, Shoot, Push. And then it's like Gurmag Angler against. Alternatively, I can just go to one. 
which I kind of like going to one better than blocking. So I think we're going to go to one. Actually, before blocks, we're going to we're going to do something here. If they drew spell queller, we're in a lot of trouble. Now we let this go. We go to one. They have Blessed Alliance X in their hand. Well, they have Blessed Alliance, so they're going to gain four life. But if they gain four life, and the Gurmag Angler is going to kill them. So I think we've got it. Yeah, because they can't escalate it. If they have Path Plus, then we're dead. This has been the best game. This might be one of the better games I've ever played. Better games of Magic I've ever played. All right. Wow, that was that was one of the better games. Yeah, you were right. That was one of the better games of Magic I think I've ever played.